Miss uh, Pam Kelly. Here you go, Pam. Hey there. Hi. Um, I am really anxious to introduce my friend Don Lake. Uh, he's done the book One Lap Around San Diego Bay. Uh, it, it gives San Diegans and visitors a great guide to go around San Diego and see all the landmarks and, and special things that we have to offer, like the, the Midway, the Cabrillo National Monument, uh, the uh, San Diego National Wildlife Refuge, the Maritime Museum, Hotel Dell, um, just to name a few. Uh, Don was born in Chicago. Uh, as a teenager, he moved to Southern California, uh, educated at University of California, Santa Barbara, uh, graduating with a degree in engineering. Um, he, in fact, he's published over 90 technical articles in electro optics. And you'll have to explain to us what that is, Don. <laughs> Uh, besides writing, he plays the trumpet and the coronet. Hey. Uh, please check out his website, dlakewriter.com, to see some of his many books, including One Lap Around California, as well as Significant American Military Aircraft, 1861 to 2020. And without further ado, my friend Don Lake. Well, thank you very much. Now, how do I get this screen share to work? Okay, so I, I have allowed it. So you should just be able to go down to the bottom of the page and okay. see, where, see where it says share screen. It'll, there's a green arrow. You should be able to share your screen. Okay, is that? Easy enough, yeah. Well, my goodness, I hope it all goes that well. <laughs> <laughs> you notice she introduced the, the book One Lap Around San Diego Bay, and this one says Once Around San Diego Bay. There yeah. are two versions of the book. <clears throat> this one, Once Around San Diego Bay, the pictures are in black and white. In the other book, the pictures are in color. Because the cost of color printing is so high, this book retails for $18 and the other one $45. So just wanted to make sure that got cleared up. So the idea here, given that, given that, the idea here is you get in the car and you start at the mouth of the San Diego Bay and you drive all the way around till you get to the other side. And the question is, what all the things do you see as you go around the bay? So let's begin here. We're going to, this is this talk is divided into sections. This is the first part. It goes from the old Point Loma Lighthouse to the San Diego Yacht Club. You'll see it comes in sections with maps like this, and each one has uh, distance and gives you an idea where you're going. So we're going to start here at the uh, north side of San Diego Bay with uh, Cabrillo statue. Now, I know all of you know that the fact is that the original statue was sent to San Francisco for the 1939 World's Fair, got interrupted by a couple of San Diegans, got brought down here and erected, uh, but then it was sandstone, didn't last very long, so they put it away and erected this copy of it instead. But <clears throat> this is the, the mark, and this is the view from there. We've all been up there. It's uh, it's really fantastic, in my opinion. Probably the best shot of the whole bay, big bay like this that you can get. At the end of the point is the whale watching overlook. It's sheltered. Uh, they have uh, telescopes out there. I have personally never seen a whale when I've been out there. But if you do see one, they kind of look like this. And then there's the old Point Loma Lighthouse, which is great. It's been restored. It's, it's a wonderful place to go visit. Problem with it, of course, is that it's the highest point, the highest land lighthouse in the country. And everybody thought that'd be really great. You can see the light farther in the sea. The problem is when you really need the lighthouse is when the marine layer in the fog grows in and nobody can see the light at all. So it turned out this lighthouse 
it's great. It's a great tourist attraction, but basically it wasn't particularly useful as a lighthouse. Now we come down the road, we come to the Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery. Uh, hats off to all those brave military men and their families that are interred there. Uh, it's always inspiring when I go by there, but there is one little sidebar for this particular cemetery and that is it's as far as i know the largest basically undisturbed grassland green grassland anywhere in san diego it's a few golf courses but they're being used all the time so for all you bird watching fans this is sort of a unique habitat up here at fort rosecrans national cemetery here's the bennington monument everything up there is low with the white headstones except this one. This, of course, is honoring the Bennington that blew up in the early 20th century. We'll get back to that later. But this is the one tower that you can actually see rising above the cemetery. Now we're going to go back and go inside. The next few things you can only get to if you're Navy or one of the days like the Brio days when they open it up. But here's a picture of the army marching at Fort Rosecrans in one of the very few flat spots. The army, of course, was in charge of protecting the mouths of harbors. And so it was their job to protect the entrance of San Diego Bay. The Navy didn't take over all of this area on uh, Point Loma until 1959. Here's some of the big gun emplacements, 14, 16 inch guns that they used to uh, uh, protect the harbor. They were fired, but never in in uh, in war. They just practiced with them a little bit. Here's the uh, <clears throat> old point, the second, the new Point Loma Lighthouse. It was built uh, in the late 19th century here on a ballast point. And I know all of you La Playa Trail people understand what ballast point is all about, but a sailing ship has to have an of amount of weight in its keel to hold it upright and keep it stable doing storms and things. So how much ballast you need depends upon the cargo. The cargo they picked up here in San Diego were primarily hides, which are very light. So when they also had to pick up the hides, they also had to pick up the rocks. And so the ballast point actually was used as the ballast for the uh, sailing ships that called upon here uh, from mid 1700s on. Here's a submarine squadron. Uh, this is one of the things that most San Diegans don't like to hear, but mile per square mile, there are more nuclear reactors here in San Diego Bay, I think, than any place else in the world. And when the uh, submarine's in, that's a couple dozen of them, well, a dozen of them anyway. Here's the flip ship. This is in its vertical position. This is a unique ship in the world because when it's like this, it's, it, it extends down three or 400 feet under sea and everything is usable as a, as a lab down there. And the Navy used it to perfect their listening techniques for deep underwater, uh, detection of things like primarily they were looking for Soviet submarines. Uh, nobody else in the world did that. It gave the US Navy a tremendous technical advantage throughout the Cold War and still today. And if you ever seen the movie Hunt for Red October, you get a good feel of how advanced the Navy was in detecting uh, submarine noises. And it all comes from the research done here on the flip ship. And the flip ship, by the way, is still tied out here in a pier. And here's the Sally Ride. This is uh, a Scripps research boat. Um, however, it's owned by the Navy. And the Navy gets to approve everything that goes on it in terms of the experiments. And so whenever the Navy wants, they can take it over or take part of it over. Or if they don't like what's going on it, they get veto power. But most of the time, Sally just uh, goes out and does her, her uh, research for scripts. Now, back off the Navy base, here's the Jennings house. I'm sure all you're familiar with this. 
used to be the sheriff's house. There was a jail, in fact, in there for a while. Here we have the location of the Bessemer Steel Mill, right here at the end of Bessemer Street. A Pittsburgh entrepreneur in the 1800s decided this was the very best place in all of San Diego to put a steel mill. Uh, I'm not sure why he thought that, but when he died, his family came in and said, this is not the very best place to put a steel mill. He got it far enough to make a few nails, run a few wires through it, and that was it. But it's still Bessemer Street, and this is the location of that original steel mill. Here's a map of the La Playa Trail. I, since you guys all know this, I put this up as an eye chart so you, because uh, you already know what this is supposed to say. And this is the Bessemer Trail that runs along the bay where the steel mill used to be. Great trail, lovely place to walk. Uh, one of the big, big highlights for many of us in Point Loma. And then there's the La Playa Yacht Club. <coughs> not to be, <coughs> excuse me, not to be confused with the San Diego Yacht Club or the Silver Gate or the Southwest. This has a little pier that can hold maybe two ships. But if you remember, and you show your car to other yacht clubs around the country, you can get in and use their facilities, I'm told. Here's the San Diego Yacht Club. And for a while in the 1980s and 90s, this was the epicenter of worldwide racing. And why? Because of the America's Cup that was here. And the Dennis Conner, his guys won it. This is the 92 winning uh, Yacht America. We're no longer the epicenter of world, <coughs> excuse me, yachting. But the skipper of the boat that finished second in this year's America's Cup was a San, is a San Diego uh, Yacht Club member. So for our next part of the trail, we're going to go from the Yacht Club out here, cover Shelter Island, come around and wind up at Spanish Landing. And the first thing we're going to find is we'll turn into the Avenida de Portugal and find the Portugal Historical Center. Whoops, wrong direction. The Portuguese Hall, we have a market there. Last Sunday, we uh, had breakfast uh, up at, <coughs> and where do we have breakfast? We had breakfast at Finnegan's. Anyway, and they had a car show in the in the in the lot for their marketplace for that day. But most importantly for the Portuguese chapel, for the Portuguese community is the chapel here, where the sailors would go out and uh, say their prayers before they left and try and be safe. If you drive around and look at many, many of the European fishing villages, they all have a little sailor's chapel. And this is ours in Point Loma. Now we'll go to the end of the, drive out to the end of Shelter Island. Here's the Yokohama Friendship Bell with the uh, statue, the red shoes right here. Great little area, great little park on a park within a park out at the end. Here's the Pacific Rim Park at the end with the Pearl of the Pacific in the middle of it. You progress down Shelter Island a bit, you get to the Tunaman Memorial. There's a lot of other great public art on Shelter Island. It's very nice, very, uh, very great and interesting to do it. Here's the new launch ramp. I'm told this is the largest launch ramp in California, if not the United States, and the busiest during summer times, maybe not last summer, but uh, normally. And here's Shoreline Park, that beautiful piece of grass that runs all the way the full length of uh, Shelter Island. Great views, great place to walk. And here's Shelter Island, uh, Shelter Island Yacht Basin, the park. Uh, 
an aerial view of Shelter Island itself. Here's America's Cup Harbor. There is a little overlook today that you can stop and go out and look at the harbor. No America's Cup boats in there now, but this is was dedicated to the America's Cup activities during the, the heyday of the uh, San Diego Yacht Clubs being the epicenter of the sailing world. If you go around the other end, you get to Fisherman's Landing or the commercial boats that take out the weekend sailors, half day, full days, extended trips. I take most of these photographs and when I went down here, I thought I'd, maybe I'd get a picture of all the boats, but it was really, really busy. So what I got a picture of was all the boat slips. Here's the USS Never Sail, a three quarter version of a Navy ship. <coughs> they say that more than a million sailors and Marines trained on this to get a feel for what it was like on a re real ship. When they built it, it got incorporated as a ship in the Navy uh, annals, but when the Navy redid their numbering system uh, in the 60s, they didn't know what to do with a building that wasn't a ship, so it's no longer registered as a ship, but it's still uh, a, a landmark on Point Loma. And now if you go up the channel that serves, uh, that comes from the bay and serves, used to serve as the uh, <coughs> water entrance for, for a product delivery into the Navy base, you get to the 52 boat memorial. Every one of the 52 submarines that were lost during World War II memorial here what the ship did and all its crew very touching very touching to me there's a, the spanish landing trail which is different than your la playa trail that ran around the bayfront here and here's the present day spanish landing park it's hard to find artwork in spanish landing this is one of them until they trim these trees, it doesn't look as trimmed as all that, but it was almost impossible to find this, but there it is. Towers of land, towers of art, towers of art in Spanish landing. Okay, our next segment goes from does Harbor Island, the airport, all the way to uh, Waterfront Park. We'll start here with Harbor Island Park. I think it's just amazing how well the port of San Diego has managed to have so many beaches so, so many people can use on the harbor. Here's an aerial view of Harbor Island. And one of my favorite uh, pieces of public art all over the bay is many of the mermaid. <coughs> just can't imagine anything more beautiful than many. Well, actually, you probably can, but I think it's still a great, great piece of abstract art, semi abstract art. Then here's Hope Complex. This is just a part of it dedicated to cancer survivors. Very touching here on Harbor, Harbor Drive. If you haven't gotten out and walked through it, you should. Now, across the street, where the airport is <coughs> was the airfield where they where Ryan built the spirit of St. Louis. And this picture, they tell me, was the first flight of the spirit of St. Louis coming off from where our airport is today. Far, far different now than it was then. And during the war, they built B-24s, the long production line that runs around, uh, runs along Interstate 5 is still there. And it's just being, I'm sure you're all are following the uh, activity of trying to decide that what the Navy and the city is going to do with that piece of property. But in the beginning, they built B-24s there. And this is what a B-24 looks like uh, taking off from Lindbergh Field 
in World War II. This is here because San Diego had a short single runway, short single runway. This was the first jet aircraft that was able to land at San Diego. It's a shortened version of the 707. That's what, <coughs> so it didn't need as much landing. The airport <clears throat> and the city as early as 1957 made a res resolution that they were gonna <clears throat> find a new place to put the airport. And here we are, 57, that's 43, 50, 55 years later. The resolution is still in place, but we still have, and still using Lindbergh Field. And inside the terminal is public art, and here's one of them. I'm sure all of you who travel are very familiar with what this looks like in real life. The Coast Guard Air Station is here. Here's a picture of it opened in 1937. This is the air station here. <clears throat> Prior to this, they used blimps and, and ships to try and find, but there was a piece of technology that arrived, built here in San Diego in the same place they built the 24s, the PBY Catalina. It wasn't very fast, but it could fly for 25 hours and it was a great scout plane and the Coast Guard used it for years to uh, patrol the, the seas off Southern California, off, off the whole country for that matter. Local product here, the PBY, Catalina. And here's the Laurel Street Roadstead. Roadstead, of course, is the sheltered place where people can come in in the harbor and be totally protected. Um, this is ours at Laurel Street still there and still used that at that that way okay our next section goes from waterfront park down to the convention center this is sort of section it's only a mile and a half but of course this is the one that all the tourists mostly see it has a tremendous number of attractions per per capita per distance so this is the next section that runs right along here downtown <clears throat> Here's the Guardian of the Water, erected in the late 30s by a local uh, San Diego sculptor built out of uh, granite, came from Julian. He put it at the back of the, the plain back of the county administration building because the main front of the administration faces inland and it was supposed to be the terminus of a grand champs say type of highway from there to Balboa Park. But when the Interstate 5 came through, that kind of ended all of that grand hopes for the great, uh, the great street from the park to the county administration building. Waterfront Park is a tremendous resource, particularly for little kids, as you can see. They can play in the water. It's only a couple of inches deep. It's great fun to watch the kids down there. And it too comes with a lot of public art. <clears throat> you may think this was a character of uh, Tony Gwynn, the great all-time padre. Actually, for some of us who are still playing softball, senior softball, it looks like almost all the guys that are in the field when we're out there playing with all those 70 year olds. The uh, <coughs> Maritime Museum, the Star of India, the main uh, main attraction. Uh, this is a San Salvador. This is the <coughs> excuse me. Volunteers built this over a number of years in Spanish uh, uh, Park. Launched it finally. That was a bit of a problem getting that done. And this is a picture on his first official maiden voyage. The San Salvador, of course, was Cabrillo's ship. Juan Cabrillo, and judged by today's standards, was not a particularly nice person. But in those days, you had to, the, the Spanish government did not pay for expeditionary forces. You had to do it on his own. So he paid for and built that ship himself. 
so he could go explore and claim Alta California and all its treasures for Spain. And he, of course, he would keep a major percentage of that. So that was his own boat. Here's a swift boat, another boat that's in the museum, the Maritime Museum. This one is particularly uh, interesting to me. This is what we used to call the Brown Water Navy. And we get our young sailors on this and go up the rivers of North Vietnam, <coughs> doing running missions up and down with the enemy on both sides. These guys, I think, were brave and certainly crazy, but they were running with these swift boats. That was our uh, brown water Navy in Vietnam for their river, river campaigns. Here is uh, Lane Field. This is the exact place where home plate was in the original Lane Field from San Diego for years. And right here in this left-handers batter's box was where the longest home run ever recorded in baseball history was struck. Ted Williams hit a ball over the fence into a moving coal train, and it didn't stop till it got to Los Angeles. Here's the Santa Fe station. It's glad to see the Santa Fe station being restored. <coughs> the plaza is back. It's no longer a parking lot. The inside, the tile work, the woodwork is still very, very interesting from the original 1915 versions. Uh, it's worthwhile actually strolling through there. If you haven't done that, take a look at the uh, craftsmanship that went into this terminal back in 1915. And here's the Electra. This for years was the power plant for downtown San Diego. It became obsolete. Instead of taking it out because it's a kind of a unique building, they built a condo up the middle of it. And so this is now the Electra is what a 40 story condominium with the old shell of the old power building still there for everyone to see. Here's the Broadway Pier in better days when all the cruise ships were in. Here's what it looked like in 1943. I, this is Navy Pier on the right. My screen has, let's see if I can do this. Right, here's, right here at the front door of this building right here on Navy Pier, there were something like a million or more soldiers that walked through that front door, got on ships here at Navy Pier and went out into the Pacific to fight the island hopping and all the wars in the Pacific. Most of this building is now gone. That front door is still there. I don't know if it's planned to be preserved or not, but it was one of the great, in my view, landmarks of our guys going out to war in that second war. Here it is in 1950. Um, right here, you see something. It's not there anymore. It's covered by Seaport Village, but this is Dead Man's Point. It's got its name <clears throat> when a sailing ship in the 1700s arrived and sort of drifted to it. They called out to it, nobody answered. They went out to the boat, no one was alive. It just sort of happened that it showed up there. And so this got the name of Dead Man's Point. Years later, the Bennington was anchored here. <coughs> Excuse me. They got a call to do a rescue. The Bennington fired up her coal-filed boilers and exploded. The Navy had a great deal of difficulty, Navy architecture, figuring out what to do with coal dust in those days. The Bennington blew up because of it. The monument's still up in Fort Rosecrans. And by the way, that same reason was the reason that the main blew up in Havana Harbor, but of course, that was blamed on the uh, Spanish, and so that triggered the Spanish-American War. Here's the Midway Museum. We've all been there. Here's the Midway out to sea. I'm particularly fond of the Midway. Its keel was laid on my birthday in 19, October 31st, 1943. Happy to say it's really one of my uh, have been with me for my entire life, the Midway. Here's Tuna Harbor Park, which is the 
Midway beside it. And here's the San Diego Memorial. There have been three USS San Diego's. This one is the one in World War from World War II. <clears throat> There's one today, but the original one started life as the US, the battleship USS California. It was part of the Great White Fleet that Roosevelt sent around the world. But then the, our battleships were too small to handle the dreadnoughts, so we, we scaled up the battleships to the very big ones that were at Pearl Harbor. The San Diego got demoted to a cruiser, uh, served some time in the Banana Republic Wars, but in World War I, sailed, uh, sailed around to the Atlantic and became the only U.S. capital ship sunk by enemy, sunk by the enemy in World War I. It hit a mine just outside the mouth of New York Harbor, sunk in about 100 feet of water. And today, it too is the national monument, underwater monument, where save for skin divers and uh, other people who like to go down. It's about two miles offshore in about 100 feet of water. The USS, the first USS San Diego. There next to the aircraft carrier is the aircraft carrier monument. Including Taffy 3. This is the second monument. This is where a couple of little Jeep characters and destroyers, a couple of destroyers held off the entire might of the Japanese Navy at the late Battle of Lady Gulf. Here's unconditional surrender. I'm glad we have this back. When it first showed up in San Diego, there was a great hue and cry. Should we keep it? Is it too kitsy? They took it away. Then the hue and cry got even louder. And it's now back. I'm glad to see it. At the end of the point, of course, is the Bob Hope Memorial. <clears throat> and recognizing his work with the soldiers from not only World War II, but all the way through the Gulf War and his efforts to cheer these guys up. Did a tremendous amount of great work for the military, Bob Hope, and his memorial. Here's Tuna Harbor when this was a tuna town and all the canneries and things were here. Here's Tuna Harbor today, this is taken from the convention center. These are not tuna fishing boats. Here's Rucko Park at the entrance to <coughs> Seaport Village. Here's Seaport Village. This picture is actually taken from Dead Man's Point, what was Dead Man's Point. Here's the, uh, the carousel, the Luft carousel. This has been moved around a couple of times. It's been here now for over 20 years, but he, it used to be on the Santa Monica Pier. So if you've ever watched 80s and 90s movies and television shows, and you often can see this carousel in its earlier days on the Santa Monica Pier. Here's a cell from headquarters building. Headquarters building is now a commercial activity, but they saved a couple of cells and some <coughs> mug shots <coughs> to remind us about the days when it actually was a police building. Here's a trolley. You'll see me putting in lots of trolley pictures. I like trolleys. Here's the present day San Diego trolley. Here's the transit center with the library over here on the left. This is a transit center you can get anywhere on any trolleys from Mexico almost to UTC on all the way out to Santee. Here's the Children's Park just across Harbor Boulevard from headquarters. This is the only park I've been in in this whole tour where the at play apparatus and everything is inside of a chain of a fenced in enclosure. Across the street, by the way, just to the left here is the Children's Museum. Some people have tried to do <clears throat> classical art. Here's an example of that in Embarcadero, Embarcadero Park North. Here's the convention center from out at the park. Sales Pavilion. 
when you just look at the architecture in this particular view, it is amazing how complicated and how, <clears throat> how either beautiful or controversial this really is. Okay, for our next thing, we're going to go from Petco Park down to Pepper Park on the Sweetwater River. Here's Petco Park. We're looking forward to the full reopening uh, in a couple of days for this year. This has almost always been voted the best uh, major league ballpark ever since it's opened for the last uh, 15, 20 years. Here's a view uh, from behind the third base dugout and uh, obviously uh, the cheap seats. Here's Tony Gwynn's statue, and it doesn't look anything like the statue in Waterfront Park. Here's a symphony. This picture has to be updated, of course, because the new bench shell is there, but with COVID and everything, I haven't been able to get out there to, to upgrade this particular picture. So this is the way the symphony used to look like. Starting this summer, I guess, it's under its brand new, brand new facility. Here's the pier in Embarcadero Park South. This is the only pier that I know of in the state that you don't need a fishing license. In fact, you can rent a fishing pole and go out here and do what you'd like. Uh, and one of my favorite restaurants, and I'm a sucker for restaurants with honest name, lives right here. And its name is Beer Bait and Burgers. Which describes exactly what you get there. Here's the point of Port of San Diego from Chavez Park. You'll notice that this is not a container ship. This is, <clears throat> San Diego is not a container port. It's what they call a broke back uh, port, which means it caters to all of the cargo that cannot be or is not being put in, in containers. So there's a couple acres of freezers here. It handles fruit, pineapples, grain, automobiles. It's the major West Coast port for all of the cargo that doesn't go in containers. Here's Cesar Chavez Park. You've seen the Tuna Memorial, there's others. This is the park here way at the end that actually tells the story of the tuna industry in the monuments and plaque and statuary. In fact, this building behind it here, this white building, once wants a tuna cannery. Uh, the bio old and lard in Chicano Park isn't close enough to the water to get included, but some of their art is, is uh, you can find along Harbor Drive. Here's a couple of examples of the art. If you haven't been and toured Chicano Park, it's really, really worth, worth your time doing that. Here's the Coronado Bridge. It looks light and airy because it is. It's designed so that if it gets blown up by the bad guys, it won't block the port and the US Navy can still get out through even though it's they sunk it. Coronado Bridge. Here's NASCO. We got a big article today or yesterday. They just got another major Navy contract. Used to be over a hundred shipyards in the United States building ocean going ships were down to under 10. This is the major one on the West Coast and they do not only Navy, but commercial ships there. Here's one of their tankers, major, major shipbuilding port on the West Coast. And of course, Naval Base San Diego, this is the heart of it. This is the one that makes San Diego the largest naval base on the planet, the largest Navy, US Navy and the largest naval base anywhere. Here's some of the ships. This one is uh, like the Bonham Richard that just caught fire and they had to dismantle. Here's a new destroyer. Here's the Littorios. And here is a very old view of all of the piers and the ships. They birthed them four, three, four, five at a time here on these uh, docks. Naval base, San Diego Naval Base. Another trolley picture, including the one in, on the way into the transit center from North Park. 
<clears throat> All right, and here's the part of another view of the loading and unloading of the broke back cargo that happens in San, the port of San Diego. One of the major ones, of course, is automobiles. There's enough storage space for 10,000 automobiles right here on the dock, plus another 10,000 more in Otay Mesa. This is uh, something like 10 or 12% of all the automobiles import the United States come through San Diego. And here's a Sweetwater River Channel into the San Diego Bay. At the edge of it here is Pepper Park. It too has its whimsical arts, aquatic center, the skulls, their art. Okay, our next link is from Gunpowder Point here around to the Silver Strand of Coronado. This is Gunpowder Point Drive because, in fact, there was a gunpowder factory out there for years. They put it out here in the middle of no place. So when it blew up, nobody would get hurt. Never blew up, they shut it down. And here's the Sweetwater River. This is one of the two rivers that feeds San Diego Bay. On one side, the north is basically the industrial and military might of the nation, where they come in with the cargo, they build the ships, the Navy is there. And on the other side of the river are 1,200 acres of Sweetwater Marsh which is basically preserved to be exactly as it was 10, 20,000 years ago. The Sweetwater River is a time warp dividing modern industrial living and the way it was way back when. And to learn about that, they have the Living Coast Discovery Center out here. It's well worthwhile. They have lots of lectures and <clears throat> exhibits and trails, obviously, that go through the marsh. Here's a view for the uh, Chula Vista Yacht Basin. And here's the mouth of the Otay River. This is the other river that feeds San Diego Bay. We get around on the Silver Strand. Here's the Navy Base Coronado. Uh, and we're starting to talk about amphibious forces, seals, a lot of interesting communications and research going on on the Silver Strand. You get up to the K's and you find that you can go on, and I don't know if they've reopened yet, but you can go on a gondola ride. Very romantic, there's wine, you can see the sunset. And if you really like Italian love songs, the guys uh, sing to you while you're there. Very interesting to have a gondola ride through the canals of the Coronado K. We're all familiar with the Silver Strand on the Pacific side, but on the Bay side, Silver Strand State Beach has a great, as you see, a great beach and a lot of good things to, to do. And here's the Vietnam Memorial Unit. This is to <clears throat> the Coast Guard and Navy that fought in Vietnam, like the Swift Boat guys. <clears throat> this is a very, very touching memorial. But even though the back of it is the fence, that is the outside of the Navy base. To get to it, you have to be Navy to come in and see it. So it's sort of a private Navy memorial at the moment. Uh, but if you do have somebody in the Navy that can get you in and get you to see it, it's well worth going over and looking at. <clears throat> Naval Amphibious Base. Here's the famous Glorieta Bay promenade that goes along the side of Glorieta Bay. And inside City Hall, if you haven't seen them, there are two glorious murals of the early days of Coronado. Here's, here's one of them. Here's the other. They have chairs. You can sit and stare at these things for quite a while. Nobody bothers you. Very, very interesting to take check out these murals. Here's Glorietta Bay Park. And Glorietta Bay itself, with the Navy base out in here and down, this is the Ks and down over here. For our last leg of the tour, we're going to go from the Hotel Dell through Coronado out to uh, the Marina uh, Naval Air Station.
this is actually a little bit far off the, the path as promised, but I'm a sucker for sunken ships. So this is a gambling ship that sunk off Coronado in 1937. And in very low tides, you can uh, still see its remains. It's very close to the Hotel Dell, so that's how it got, got to be included in this uh, sequence. Here's the Hotel Dell from the ocean. I don't know how many have been out in a boat and looked at it from there. It's very, very impressive to me. And of course, it was impressive to Frank Lon Baum, who used it as the model for his Wizard of Oz books. Here it is under construction. Con construction. Here's the famous Hotel Coronado Dragon Tree. This was protected, it had never been trimmed until they came, the crew, film crew come out, came out to do some like it hot. They, the Cameron people decided it was in the way and they trimmed it. The Coronado Hotel people got so upset they almost threw the whole film crew off and stopped the whole thing. Uh, but they finally cooled down and the dragon tree is still here in front of the Hotel Dell. And here's the original garden, the garden that Kate Sessions did for the Dell. Kate Sessions, of course, the early San Diego treasure of, of not only here, but Balboa Park and others places. The original garden. We can't go on with the Hotel Dell without talking about Katie Morgan. Of course, Katie is the one who felt she got stood up by her lover and walked into the sea. And now they claim that the hotel is haunted by Kate Morgan. They charge you extra for to use her room, even though it's a small room that overlooks the dumpsters, I'm told. But the other interesting thing to me was for every ghost sighting that's reported in, from Kate Morgan's room, there's two or three reported from her main room, which is down the hall and up the stairs, a very small little room that she can still rent. And that one has far more ghost sightings than Kate Morgan's. Here's the Hotel Dell with the power plant in front. At the time this was built, this was the largest power plant in California, served the Hotel Dell and all of Cal uh, Coronado. Of course, John D. Spreckles took over the whole operation as part of his uh, uh, work for the 30 years that he basically built San Diego. He did the electric trolleys, again, more trolleys, and that's all Spreckles activities. And here's his mansion. This is built looking out at Glorieta Bay. There are tunnels that go from the mansion to the power plant and from the power plant to the Hotel Dell. And the tunnels are much larger than they should be. They're very comfortable for people to walk in. And uh, the stories are that <clears throat> there was a great deal of uh, hanky-panky <clears throat> going on between the people in the mansion and the people in the hotel that got, that uh, they managed to get away from it by using the tunnels. It's now a bed and breakfast and been largely restored. Here's the music room. And here's the stairway. <clears throat> Just to throw it in, he also, besides trolleys, he also did the organ pavilion in Balboa Park. I'm sure we're all familiar with that. Here's the Coronado Municipal Golf Course. This view shows how it's built right on the point. Beautiful setting, one of the classic settings for a golf course anywhere in the country. <clears throat> and it's a public course. <clears throat> Here's the Tidelands Park at the base of the bridge. And here's a bikeway at Tidelands Park. This is the northern end of it, the Silver Strand Bikeway. This goes all the way from <clears throat> Ferry Landing to South Bay. Here it is at the Marine Biology Study far down South Bay. I'm told by my bicycle friends that we're finally getting close to having this trail open all the way around the bay so you can actually ride it from one ferry term, terminal uh, 
excuse me, ferry landing to the other. Although I don't, it's not open yet. There's a picture of old Coronado. It's in here because some people ask, was North Island ever an island? And as you can see from the water in here at this tide, it's the Coronado is separated from North Island. It's that the military filled that up, of course, in the early 40s for their air station. Here's the tent city that Spreckles built so real people could have fun and couldn't afford to uh, stay in the Dell. This in the 20s and 30s. Here's the original car ferry. <clears throat> Here's the Coronado Ferry Landing. Now I'm told that this landing is built on a little reedy sandy base that is uh, home for green rays that get to be maybe a foot, 14 inches in diameter. And if you just drop your bait in there, they will find them and you will catch a ray. Unfortunately, they're also poisonous and they have quills. But if you're interested in catching rays, this little off the end of this pier in this marshy sandy area is a place to do it. Here's Cent Cent <coughs> Centennial Park next to the ferry landing. Here's Harborview Park, the next one up the road. And this, my favorite little park of all of them, Bayview Park, is basically one main with from <clears throat> First Street to the bay. The vegetation, the way the park is done is absolutely relaxing. It's wonderful. And when you come out the other side, there's a beach and a really nice, incredible view of downtown San Diego from Bayview Park. Of course, you can't that's up over here. What we're trying to do is get to here to get to the mouth of the San Diego Bay. But of course, this is Navy. You can't do that unless you're Navy, of course. So real people have to stop up here, actually right up here. But North Island is, uh, oh, come on, come on, don't, don't stop now. Historic for all of its uh, first for naval, naval aviation including the first aircraft landing on a moving aircraft carrier is done right here. Today we have these Osprey replacing helicopters. We have the F-35, the first vertical landing takeoff and landing supersonic jet. This is the latest and greatest for uh, the Navy and the rest of the military. So that's one lap around uh, San Diego Bay. As I said, there are two versions of the book, one in monochrome, one in color. There are also a couple of companion videos. One uh, uh, is public art on San Diego Bay, and another is the top five attractions of San Diego Bay. You can find them on my YouTube channel if you just go look for them. And I want to thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope somebody's still awake. Uh, appreciate you having me over and letting me uh, share the bay with you, a uh, bay that I've come to really love and appreciate. Thank you. Thank you, Don. That was, that was wonderful. Now, that was great. Fantastic. Are you, uh, are you up for uh, taking any questions? Sure. How do I get on a screen share? <laughs> uh, go down to the same place, the little uh, green button there, and you can, uh, I think it's quit or end, end screen sharing. Stop share. Okay. There, there you go. Beautiful. That was easy, easy money. So folks, you'll have to uh, unmute yourself if you, uh, if you have a, a question for Don. And, and again, that was a excellent presentation, Don. I really enjoyed it. I learned, I learned a lot. You. <laughs> Uh, Don, this is Sally Bixler here. I'm a, a Point Loma native, but I spent 26 years in Imperial Beach, and I appreciated your photographs and your commentary, but I would say in the future, you might want to consider covering, um, you kind of skipped over Imperial Beach. Yeah. There's a treasure down there that a lot of people, especially bird lovers, like to, uh, like to visit. It's called the Tijuana Estuary, uh, uh, Estuary uh, Visitor Center. And I know it well. 
You know it well. Okay, good. <laughs> well, it might be good to put it in your presentation. There are uh, just some beautiful birds down there, some beautiful scenery, and it's a beautiful part of San Diego at the most southwesterly corner of the uh, of the county, actually. Yeah, as, a, as an aside, I, there's some condos right at the end of uh, the street there before the park. Yeah, I tried, to, I tried to buy one of those once, but didn't work out. <laughs> no, sorry to hear that, but it is it is a beautiful place to visit. And um, and if you could add it to your uh, presentation, I think I uh, would like to talk about it. Thank you for that. I can turn on You're welcome. Hi, Don. <laughs> Uh, that was fantastic. I've lived here my whole life and you taught me things that I didn't know before. So thank you. I loved your um, theory of Frank Baum and the Hotel Dell. I wanted to know if you ever heard the other theory that he looked out at Loma Land, which was started in 1897 and his book was written in 1900. And he saw the lights of Loma Land <laughs> and that was his inspiration. Had you ever heard that? Yeah, I've that? heard that. But but you know, if you take a walking tour of Coronado, one of the places they send you by is Frank Lloyd Baum's house. Right, I've looked. At so it. I tend to lean, tend to lean toward the, the Hotel Del. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, I want it to be Loma Land, but I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was great, Don. Thank you so much for a super presentation. We all learned something, I'm sure. Definitely. I had to take notes. Yeah. That Kitty, was so good. I was taking notes. Kitty took a page of notes. <laughs> you you need to buy the book. It's I'm wonderful. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy the color version. Good, good point, Pam. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you've got one, one buyer right yeah. here. Okay. <laughs> uh, do, do they set, uh, does La Playa or someone around here sell the book? You get it at uh, Amazon. Uh, since it's an independent publishing book, uh, Barnes and Noble and those places will order it for you. But the best thing to do is just go on to Amazon Books, look up Don W. Lake, and you'll find it and all the rest of my books uh, right there okay. available. Great. Thank you. I wonder, if they, I wonder if they have it in La Playa Books. I wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, do. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, when I went down there to try and get them to buy it, the, uh, the COVID thing had started and I never talked to anybody. So okay. I don't know if they have it, but I haven't made contact with them. I'll, I'll work on that for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He's got connections. Yeah, well, not really. Uh, I live <laughs> down the street. Hey, uh, any, any further questions for Mr. Lake this evening, folks? So good. Marty said, this is a great bike ride. These are a couple uh, uh, chat comments. Excellent talk, Don. Thank you, etc. So, all right then. Uh, without further ado, uh, we'll let uh, we'll let Don go. Thank you again, Don. That was a wonderful lecture, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank Very you, good. Don. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So long, everybody. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Eric. Have a good you. Very well. Come see Karen. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Next Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Tomorrow. This Thursday. Yeah, this Thursday. Hi, Karen. Yeah, this is like Hi, Ray. 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 Hi, Ray.